those of you who do not know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as personal Savior. I want you to realize that God has a perfect plan and that perfect plan has no place for imperfect man to do anything to work for it, to earn it, or to deserve it. However, imperfect man can be the recipient of the work of this plan because God did all the doing. In eternity past, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit met in the eternal life conference known as the Doctrine of Divine Decrees. And there God the Father outlined the plan, God the Son agreed to uh, implement that plan, God the Holy Spirit to reveal that plan. And that plan called for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the always existing God, the second person of the Godhead, to add humanity, perfect humanity, to his always existing deity. When he became a man on that very first Christmas, the Lord Jesus Christ became the unique person of the universe. Truly, God, equal, co-equal co and co-eternal with God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and yet different from the other members of the Trinity, in that he was also perfect man, like man in every way, except he had no old sin nature, and unlike man in that he was also God. But his deity never spilled over to help his humanity. The Lord Jesus Christ was sustained in his humanity by the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Word of God. And when he was put to the test at all points, like as we are, never sinning, our Lord Jesus Christ went to the cross of Calvary. And I want you to know, beloved, that God the Son had you personally in mind when he went to the cross. For there on the cross, God the Father took all the sins of the world, including all of your sins, past, present, or future, and wrapped them up in one point of time, placed them on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and he bore the full and perfect penalty for your sin in his own body on the tree. He who knew no sin became sin on your behalf, that you might become the righteousness of God in him. And so it was that all sin for all men for all time poured out on the Lord Jesus Christ was judged. And when he cried on the cross, finished, he was saying that he had fully and completely and perfectly paid for your sin, for mine, for all sin, for all men, for all time. That price has never, ever been exacted from anyone again. The issue of sin is now a moot issue. It is not brought up again because the sin has been paid for. Now the issue is, what would you do with Jesus, who is called the Christ? The songwriter said, neutral you cannot be. One day your heart will be asking, what will he do with me? Right now, at this point in time, I'm inviting you on behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ to place your faith and trust in him. Faith is non-meritorious. It has nothing to do with your intelligence. It has nothing to do with your abilities. It has nothing to do with your works. It is non-meritorious in any way. Right where you are, you simply believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross of Calvary. And at that moment of time, God will reach down and do 40 wonderful things for you, uh, totally by grace, on the basis of his character. You will be born again. You will be saved. You will be regenerated. All of these terms refer to the same thing. And I would invite you to write to us and let us know of your decision to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because we have some literature which will help you to understand the decision you made and to help you to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we invite you then to begin your growth process, growth in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You grow by means of study of the Word of God. Many times you'll be told now that you're saved, go to start praying. Well, you should pray. But you must first of all start to take in the Word of God. The Word of God is the mind of Jesus Christ. You must make the mind of Jesus Christ your basis for thinking, which means that there's only one thing for you to do, and that is to get into a good, solid local church where the Word of God is taught carefully from the original languages so that you may grow up spiritually. 
And as you grow, you will read his word. You will uh, pray. You will tell others about who and what he is and what he's done for you. You will give. There are many things you will do. But nothing takes precedence over your taking in of the word of God. Now let us pray. Heavenly Father, what a privilege and an honor it is to bring before you those who are believing on the Lord Jesus Christ in this moment of time as their own personal Savior. I thank you that him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out, our Lord Jesus Christ said, indicating that everyone who believes will be saved. Thank you for his finished work on the cross. Thank you, too, for this great doctrine which we have looked at, the doctrine of soul fragmentation so that believers in our Lord Jesus Christ might avoid this very, very present problem which is so destroying the Church of Jesus Christ. And so I commit each one to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.